In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning from the book of St. Matthew, and this is the first Sunday of Matthew. Jesus speaks on the rewards that are available to man. And midway through this Gospel reading, Peter, who was always one of the bolder disciples, stood up and asked the Lord, he said, Lord, we have left everything and followed you. What then shall we have? And to this Jesus replies, Truly, truly, I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man shall sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or land for my namesake will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Now, some people who are of the doubting persuasion, when they read these words, sometimes they think possibly that Jesus is trying to bribe us into the kingdom of heaven with the promise of thrones. But Jesus is making a special point here to his disciples. He wanted to impress upon them and all of the followers that to be a Christian is not easy. To be a Christian is costly, and that it meant sacrifice. He promised his followers that following him would mean certain persecution with the majority of his disciples following much the same fate as what the Lord himself And for this reason, Jesus says, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus never tried to bribe people into following him, but rather he tried to challenge them. And Jesus tells us that even though it may seem that in this world goodness was not present and that there would be no eternal reward, He stressed on them not to lose faith because the true reward is not in the world that they live in and that we live in, but rather the true reward is in heaven. And so for this reason, Jesus promises us also this morning that our reward is real. And that's why he said, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters for my namesake will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. So therefore, we need to remember, my brothers and sisters, that all that God gives us is grace. We cannot earn what God gives us. We cannot deserve it. We cannot put God in our debt. Rather, what he gives us is given out of the goodness of his heart. What he gives us is not pay, but a gift. Not a reward, but grace. And that is why what God gives us is so way out of proportion to what we can ever do. Anything that we do, whether we give to philanthropy or we give to charity or we give to church or we do good works, they are in response because we have faith in God. And it's the faith that allows us then in turn to do good works. Remember this quote in passage. Eye has not seen, eye has not heard, nor has it ever entered into a man's heart what things God has prepared for those who love him. 
there are three types, types of Christians. One type is the Christian who does the will of God because he's afraid of going to hell. If I don't do it, God's going to punish me. And we call this person a slave because he does everything out of fear of what the master will do to him. The second kind is what we can call a hireling. This type of Christian works for hire as workers who work for pay. And he thinks that if he does any good, he does it only because he expects God to return him the favor. If he does any good, he does it only because he expects God to reward him. And this is the person who tries to bargain with God. And he kind of thinks through his mind and he says to God, I'll do this for you, Lord, if you'll do this for me. And Jesus spoke of the hireling when he said to, he said of those who do good that they may receive glory from men. And he says, verily I say to you, they have already received their reward here on earth. And my dear friend, there's also, friends, there's also the third kind of Christian, which is the highest kind of Christian, is he who loves his fellow man spontaneously without ever thinking of hell or getting a reward for anything that he or she may do. So God is not looking for slaves or mercenaries, but rather as sons and daughters who lead honorable lives for the love of him and from the eagerness to serve him. I share this story with you to further explain this point. One morning, a little boy put a piece of paper beside his mother's plate at breakfast. And on it, he had written, Mother owes John. And then there's a list. For running errands, 25 cents. For being a good boy, 10 cents. For taking music lessons, 15 cents. Extras, 5 cents. For a total of 55 cents. Now his mother came to the table and saw the note and she just smiled, but she said nothing. At lunchtime, she placed a bill with 55 cents on the bill next to her son's plate. But there was a little bill, there was another little bill that read, John owes mother. And then she listed, for being good, zero cents. For nursing him through a long illness, zero cents. For shoes and clothes and gloves and playthings, zero cents. For all his meals in a beautiful room, zero cents. Total, zero. And so the boy read it, and it was like a light bulb that went on. And he threw his arms around his mother's neck and returning the 55 cents, said, Mommy, take the money back and let me love you and do things for nothing like you do for me. There are inspiring examples of Christians who worked for God. Not as slaves, not as mercenaries, but spontaneously out of love for Him. And so I share one more story with you this morning before I end. A missionary doctor in Korea who had just performed major surgery on a poor peasant was asked, Doctor, how much would you be paid in the United States for an operation like this? And the doctor looked and then he replied, about $5,000. Well, how much will you be paid for it here? And looking at the poor Korean woman who had begged him to save her life, the doctor replied, for this, I will get her gratitude. 
and my master's smile. That is worth more to me than all the money that the world can give. Finally, my dear friends, the strange thing about the attitude of Jesus toward reward is that he promises, uh, he promises it to those who are obedient without any thought of reward whatsoever. In the parable of the Last Judgment that we hear slightly a, few, a week or so before the start of Great Lent, when Jesus said to the righteous, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And those people that were listening were, were confused because they didn't understand it. And by complete surprise, they asked, Why? Why, Lord? What did we do to receive your blessing? And Jesus had to tell them, I was sick and you visited me. The world and all of us live in it has its own rewards. And I'm sure you know what they are. Money, recognition, honor, but none of these can ever compete to the reward God has in store for those who serve him every day in so many little ways. Not as slaves, not as mercenaries, but of a spontaneous and grateful love for what he did for us on the cross. As we heard in this morning's gospel reading, everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or lands for my sake will receive in return a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Amen.